y'all this is a day in the life of being a substitute teacher this is what i do when i am not doing real estate brown girls are beautiful or on my youtube channel um this is behind the scenes footage with brown girls are beautiful this is my outfit for the set today <laughs> today i'm with fourth graders um i haven't dealt with fourth graders yet so today's my first day and a lot of them are almost just as tall as me so normally i do kindergarten first second and I've worked with third, fourth, and fifth grade in the in the past, but because of my height, <laughs> I only prefer like dealing with elementary children. Because if I have behavioral issues, I'm not trying to have those issues. But this is a really nice classroom. So just to let y'all know, it's different with the type of um, district that you you move to. Um, <clears throat> You know, realtors can't say but so much about school districts and things like that because if our clients ask us about the schools, we're not at liberty to tell them. But this classroom smells very fresh. It's very clean, really neat. It's set up real cute. I really like the way this classroom looks. They have their little library zone over here. And when they come back, they already the teacher has already lined up what they're going to do for today. And I'm only going to be in here until 11. And then I'll be splitting my day up to go to another class from 11 to 3. And then at 3, it will all be over with. So it goes by pretty fast, you all. I was a little late getting here today. I was supposed to get here earlier. I didn't get here till like 8. You know, three of they got a disco ball. I think this is so cute. This is one of the cutest classrooms um, that I've seen in a long time. I just love the way this classroom is decorated. Um, this is a male that decorated the classroom. I met him before um, he released me to the class. But I think this is so cute. They have a Plinko board. And I even got a compliment from one of the students she said she liked my outfit a lot of the children always are complimenting me and yesterday i just got a hug out of nowhere from one of the students at another school it was so random i've actually been offered a position already my first day was yesterday at a different school and um that school is predominantly hispanic the only difference is the resources are different depending on what area of town you go to so what you'll notice is that a lot of our melanated people um <clears throat> i'm not gonna say it's all melanated but highly dominant with like um hispanic areas it's like less resources and the classrooms are not as clean the classroom i was in yesterday had like a mildew smell look like mold under the sink or some type of rust going on and it was like a really foul odor when i walked in the classroom and um it's a very strong odor and if anybody knows anything about water leaks it can lead to mold and that can be very detrimental to children that's something we learn in real estate and that's why this has to be taken care of because it can destroy your lungs you all it can be deadly mold can be deadly so <clears throat> you know you just got to think about that when you are spending your money wisely i would recommend everybody um just as a melanated individual and even as a realtor i would say save your money so that you can move to a highly affluent area give your children the best resources possible so they they can actually be in a classroom setting that's clean that smells good um better opportunities i went to the gym you all they they have like gymnastics equipment there um the pe instructor has like a headset and i guess they have like all these mats like it's real fancy in the gym compared to some of the other plain gyms that i've seen so you know to be able to afford your child better opportunities i think it's worth it to budget your money and not spend it all on um jordans worrying about european cars worried about um buying fendi prada gucci louis all of them can afford to send their children to pu uh, private schools if they wanted to or you know a better school district or have private tutors and things of such like a lot of parents can't afford that so like why not try to set your children up for the best opportunity for a better future you all and that's really what i want to say um this is a message from brown girls are beautiful excuse me i didn't fix myself up too much but you know the ensemble Ooh, camera 
tilted down. The ensemble isn't looking too bad. I don't know if y'all can see me. But um, yeah, these things are these things are important. Um, <clears throat> just giving giving your children the best opportunity that you can. You know, um, I don't know who wouldn't want to do that. You know, and so like, we really think about the fact that uh, apparently our melanated people are the top spenders in the nation. I think we spend like trillions of dollars every year on just products and merchandise. We need to be investing that into ourselves, into our, you know, children and their futures and their education. You know, there you can't put a price on your peace of mind, your way of living. There's no reason why this should not take priority. And it's a big difference. Like yesterday, one of the boys was actually sleeping in class. One of the girls was sleeping in class and they were the only two melanated children in the classroom. And when I spoke to the teacher, she was saying that she's from Africa. She's a sweetheart, you all. She's very passionate. And what she was telling me is that usually um, the ones that give her the most trouble are the melanated children. The, the black children is what she told me in the hallway. And everybody else in the classroom is Hispanic. So right now, what's going on in a lot of these other school systems is they're, predom they're predominantly Hispanic. Um, this classroom is all Caucasian. So there's not one person that I saw that's Hispanic. I did see like an Asian girl or something like that. But this is really what's going on out here. So I just wanted to show you behind the scenes footage so you could see for yourselves. Um, if I go to the classroom tomorrow and show you what it's looking like at the other school, it's a total difference. It's a total different area. And these two schools are about 20 to 40 minutes apart from one another because uh, yeah, 20 to 40 minutes apart from one another. So I just wanted to show y'all what it's like um, being able to afford your children better possibilities by way of their zip code, uh, by way of the county that you live in, the district of the school, definitely makes an important um, an importance in your life. And just the quality of education and resources that they are subjected to makes a major difference. I remember when we moved from Germany and came to the United States, there was a difference in education because a lot of the things that we were going over in America, we had already gone over in Germany um, and it had something to because we grew up in the Dodds system, for those of you who remember that, D-O-D-D-S, Dodds. So that's what it is, you all. But I'm going to sign out, and I'll check back in with y'all later. All right, y'all. Now it is 8.54. It's time for me to go pick up the children. So I'm headed on my way to the gym to go get them, and then they'll be working on some reading assignments. All right, y'all. Just a little update. <laughs> Spin around in the chair. <laughs> oh, signing out, y'all. Y'all, it would just so happen that as I dropped the children off, I had a 40-minute break. So since I had a 40-minute break, I said, hmm, let me go get something to eat. <clears throat> I had been really craving some tacos, so I looked up the taco spot. It's literally only like seven minutes up the road. So I said, let me go ahead and go get the tacos. I ordered on the phone. So all I had to do was go in there, pick up the tacos, leave right out, right? As soon as I got there, I had to go use the bathroom real quick and then paid for the tacos. On the way back, I'm coming on back and then I noticed that the traffic is piling the freak up, y'all. So I'm like, oh, what is this? Cheese, I got cheese on the seatbelt. Yeah, it's a hot mess. So I noticed that, um, <clears throat> I got a napkin right here. So I'm like, what's going on? Lo and behold, we're not making it through the red light. And I'm like, why are we not moving? Why are we not moving, right? We're not moving because up ahead, <clears throat> let me show y'all what's going on up ahead. This is what's going on. If y'all can see that, I don't know if y'all can see it. Flashes of lights police car um <clears throat> fire truck this has never happened to me before i was not able to pick the kids up so i only had like five more minutes 
before I had to pick them up, I had to call the school and let the school know, like, I'm not there because I went to grab something to eat. Like, literally, <clears throat> the place is seven minutes up the street, 10 minutes at the most. And the only reason it took me 10 minutes is because I went a different way and I, it took me through the neighborhood it took me out of my way so there was three minutes that I could have spared and um, <clears throat> nonetheless I would have made it back in time if it wasn't for this accident so if you work at a school I guess the lesson learned is to bring your lunch don't even try to go get anything to eat because this could happen to you and the children were in my care I'm the substitute for the time being but I couldn't pick them up they're at the library so I had to call the school and let them know what's going on but I do see there's a traffic accident they ha there's a car I don't know how this happened y'all I don't even know if y'all can see it I'll try to show it yep. to y'all so I am literally stuck in traffic and I was not able to get the children from the media center which is the library y'all um but it's it is what it is so I called the school and let them know um I was hungry I did bring lunch, which I probably could have just asked them, do y'all have a microwave? And I could have eaten these store-bought noodles that I got this little teriyaki stuff and some water to it. But no, I wanted some real taco. I wanted the shrimp Hawaiian tacos. I just had to have it. I've been craving it for a whole couple of days now and I finally got it. And then couldn't even really enjoy it like I wanted to. I still have the, um, the, the Tostito chips and the queso sauce. I have that with my punch. <clears throat> I guess I can show it to you. <clears throat> this punch is pretty good, y'all. Mm -hmm. My bag of queso sauce and cheese. Um, and <clears throat> queso cheese and um, nachos or whatever you want to call them, the chips, tortilla chips. But yeah, this is what happened to me, y'all. Look, I'm trying to sound out victimized. This is what happened to me. <sighs> Lo and behold, I was my freaking stomach was growling, y'all. And I just wanted something good to eat. I didn't know all this was gonna go down. So <clears throat> I told her I'll be back as soon as possible. <clears throat> so right now, I'm just trying to head back over there. <clears throat> I don't know what they're gonna do, but I guess they'll figure something out until I can get back into the school, y'all. I got the keys to the classroom, so hopefully the door isn't locked. <clears throat> they probably got some spare keys. Hopefully they have a janitor with some keys that they can get open to the classroom door. But yeah, so we're just backed up until something gives, I don't know if they're gonna redirect traffic, but it literally happened at this intersection that I need to take. So this is, this is the hold up, y'all. This is crazy. I don't know if y'all can see further ahead because I got this my other phone is actually at the classroom so thank god I just I brought this I have one phone with me but I don't have my other this is like an older phone I don't even know if you can see up ahead because I can't zoom in any more than this but something happened up here right when you turn in where you have to get to the school and this is the road where the school is located so this is what's going on y'all I need to turn right and I can't turn because of this. All right, y'all, I think I'm starting to see some activity. It's like one, I don't know, one. I think the clock says 157, I believe. <clears throat> but apparently this accident happened at 117. So it happened, I guess while I was getting my food, y'all, because the kids got dropped off at 12.50. I immediately left. It only t took like 10 minutes to get to the taco place. So by one o'clock, one o'clock I was there. I went and used the bathroom, paid for my food. I was on my way back. By that time, I'm trying to think, 1.20? So 117. So yeah, while I was out there, either getting to the food or getting my food and on the way back, that's when this accident happened. I just checked the live traffic report. So this is something that freshly just happened. I can see the cleanup crews from here, sweeping the debris from the roadway. Um, but the fire truck still has our lane blocked and we're not moving. The lane in the left lane, they, some of them had turned around and made a U-turn. 
um, but the way traffic is so thick right now, they're not they're not going to try to let me over because I have put my signal light on, but I, I doubt they're going to let me over. Um, I do see a police car turning, so I hope they go ahead and just let some traffic through because I'm tired of sitting here. The children are supposed to be departing like at 2.32. Um, they get out of school, so they might have to have somebody else to release them to the walkers, the riders, and the bus riders and all of that. Um, somebody else might have to do that. But I had a whole <clears throat> schedule that the teacher had given me. And what else? They were supposed to work on like some group stuff, social studies, um, until they leave. So all of that got left on the desk. So they should be able to see it. My laptop was out. My bag was out. My phone was out. Because I was thinking that I was just going to run back in the classroom you know, real quickly, but then I thought about it, so I, I didn't need to get anything out of there because I just needed to head straight to the car because I already had the car key and I could just leave. I already had my bag in here to pay for the food with my wallet or my debit card or whatever. So then this happened, y'all. What a day, what a day. And now I have been offered another position at another school for a more permanent situation. And I have a teacher that called and left me a voice message wanting to know on next Monday if I could substitute for the entire day instead of half the day. Well, she said the night, so whatever day that is, I have to check. And then I'm telling this other school that, oh, I'll be there tomorrow. Then I change it. I'm like, I'll be there Monday. Now I'm gonna have to change it again and tell them because really they asked me to do a, a permanent position with them yesterday which was my first day with them. And I had already made plans at other schools and I had told them that. And I don't like to, you know, when you have like a fulfillment or an obligation, I don't like to go back on my word, but y'all, it is what it is. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll just keep good communication open because they caught me off guard with that. But it's a, it's a good thing because that means, you know, they're in need of people. And if you want to work at a school, they're always in need of people. And I think because it's such a high like turnover rate, um, when people find a good school, they usually try to stay there, especially if like they're a staff member or a teacher. But um, a lot of times people leave schools because they find better opportunities. And I can't blame them because I see why um, they don't really pay teachers that much. They don't pay substitutes that much. They don't pay teachers assistants that much um, to have an English degree like I do that's why I never really went into teaching because I didn't want to go through the politics of it all and then <clears throat> you don't get paid that much I mean you get paid a salary and you get pay, paid twice out of the month I'm, I'm sure per, many people are aware you do get the paid holidays you get the um, two weeks vacation for winter break you get the spring break paid um, the entire summer I don't know how that works I remember reading up on it but there's a difference between certified teachers and non-certified teachers as well. So is it worth it to go and get your certification? If you're really serious about teaching, I don't have, um, I don't really have the motivation to go and get a certification to teach. I am a teacher by nature. I've always been teaching um, just anyway. I mean, that's what I've done on jobs. That's what I do as a realtor as I inform my clients. So I don't really see the need to go and get a teacher's license or certification i have a real estate license so i don't want this situation this teaching situation to overtake what i'm doing as a realtor because in the evenings um i'm still able to like show houses you know to clients most clients don't want to see houses until they get off of work usually that's like 5 five thirty six, unless they have some time off in the day or they took the day off or usually on the weekends which I, open houses are on the weekends um, occasionally you'll get an open house that's that they'll open up on like a Friday or a Thursday that's very rare um, yeah but real estate is happening every day all day um, like I said most clients are not available throughout the week time some are depending upon what their schedule is like and I don't really have time to just be waiting around for people that want to see houses do they want to buy a house we don't know the economy is very shaky with the real estate market so that dictates a lot with what people do in terms of their career professions and you know just everything affects everything so <clears throat> in the meantime 
I have found something that's more flexible with my schedule that allows me to come in when I want to, or if I need to take some time off or go to an appointment, I can. I don't have to worry about being on the corporate plantations time frame, y'all. You know, whether I can do this or do that, you know, can I take this day off? Can I, I got to put in a PTO day. I got to accumulate the PTO time. I'm over that. I've worked too many years of my life to be dealing with that. I am too grown for that. I'm just too, I'm just over it. So, you know, I, I can't, um, I'm always going to keep my real estate license as long as I want to. And that's not going to go anywhere. Um, I did have someone cause I used to do insurance claims to call me as soon as they saw my resume. And um, when they saw that I had a real estate license, they wanted to talk about it. And I kindly let them know that, yes, I do have a realtor. I'm, I'm an active realtor. My license is active and is current and up to date. And I can I um, basically intend to keep it that way. And, you know, they basically told me, you know, I think I had a conversation recorded. I might have actually deleted it. Because a lot of times I record professional conversations, business conversations. You've got to do this sometimes just to cover your bases and your tracks. But they told me that's not something that they would actually uh, technically parade in a job interview. And it wasn't me parading. It was just me saying that I know what the economy is like. And I know how these jobs will try to basically get rid of you. I didn't say that in, in these words, but I basically said, because I know how the economy can be in the job market. So I'm always gonna have the real estate license because I have actually had a real estate license while I've been you know, in other career professions, um, working with insurance and still was able to do what I needed to do outside of you know, doing insurance. So that's me securing myself so anytime the job wants to act froggy and want you know i'll still have commission checks coming in and see that's what they don't like when when jobs can't control you with uh you know that paycheck dangling it over your head and you feel like a slave oh i need my i need my job i need my benefits yes people need money but if they didn't create money we wouldn't even need money we need water food shelter you know clothing um, oxygen. We need health. That's just what we really need. This man-made money, this stupid ass fiat current system, uh, current, this, this currency that they've fictitiously made, this is why everybody is stuck in a freaking slave mentality situation. And I'm just over that for my life, y'all. I know this went into a whole nother like situation that I'm talking about right now, but it just came, you know, it just came to my mind while I'm looking out. Man, I've been sitting here for a while. It's 207. This is crazy. But it just, you know, came to my mind while all of this came up. So now I see another fire truck has pulled up. They're backing up into the lane uh, where I need to turn. So I don't know. I don't know how long I'm going to be sitting here, y'all. I guess it was just the wrong time of day for me to go get something to eat. Despite my hungry stomach, I should have just come to the car, got my Pad Thai noodle bowl, and just heated it up in the microwave and put some water in it and called it a day. I had everything I needed right here. But no, I was like, well, since I'm only seven minutes up the street from the taco place that I've been craving, I can just go grab some tacos while the children are at the media center for 40 minutes and I'll be right back. Oh no, that didn't happen. Lesson learned, y'all. Lesson freaking learned. And isn't this is not an office job. So it's not like an office job, you can just call your manager or your supervisor and be like, oh, yeah, you know, there was a traffic accident and they'll understand. But I actually had children in my care and custody. So that's what made it made it so difficult. I was hoping something like this would never happen, but it happened. So this is what it is, y'all. We are slightly moving. The 600 feet. Turn right oh, onto Elizabeth Lane. So we're slightly moving. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to turn. We'll see. Hopefully I can make it there in time before the children have to depart. So that's the update, y'all. As you can see, traffic looked like it's starting to move. The light just changed yellow. So hopefully the cars in my lane will start to turn to the right. Now, I don't know who these Caucasian people are. I saw this woman walking with her three children earlier. Then I saw this man walking. Um, and so I don't know, like, if they're a part of what happened or what. I don't know. But she was telling the toddler, she was like, you're getting too far away from me. She had three little children that was walking with her. So I don't know what's going on, y'all. 
but it's very rare that you're going to see this scenario taking place with Caucasian people walking. Um, it's probably a reason for it with children, okay? And I'm just being real. Um, this is a very nice area where this situation occurred. And if I can show you, it's with the houses. Of million dollar houses are out here, y'all. Um, I cut through one of the neighborhoods earlier. So it's a very affluent, astute neighborhood. Look, what he got? D. Trump. That's what he got. <laughs> Thank you, President Trump. That's what he has on the back of his. So I'm waiting to turn. All right, y'all. I literally just turned into the school. Like, where that happened was literally where I needed to turn in at the school. So it took me all this time. Oh, somebody just took my parking space. And guess what? And guess what? They only have 30 minutes. And then they're going to be out. They're going to be out of here. But that's okay. I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to finish out this day. That's what I'm going to do. Things happen. All right, y'all. As you can hear, it is a med house in here. I made it. And the children are in the gymnasium. All right, y'all. I am on my way out. These children are full of energy. I'm dealing with the fourth and fifth grade. I'm at the car. Um putting my bags away y'all so let's see that I unlocked the door I took the keys to the front office checked in with them let them know how it went and I'll tell y'all something um, sometimes you know people seem like they're not too receptive to talk to you and I notice things like I pick up on vibes and uh, sometimes people have a way of being and you know I notice everything y'all now I don't think I'm over analyzing either but one of the teachers was very open very kind you know when it's time to take the children um, to where they usually depart for the bus so that's part of the teachers duties as well for those of you out there who didn't know the teachers have that responsibility as well and um, basically you have to make sure the children get on the bus uh, all the way up to what is that okay. I don't know why it's escaping. Oh, well I need gas I don't know if that's got something to do with it all the way up to fifth grade y'all so with that being said one of the teachers you know um, embraced me She's Caucasian. I don't want to bring race into it, but I'm going to bring race into it because we're at a predominantly Caucasian school. Um, now, this, oh God, these people will literally run into the back of you. These are parents acting like this. So actually, y'all, and I don't know why the brakes are squeaking because the brakes recently got put on here, but I, I think there's some stuff they're supposed to rub on the brakes that they didn't do properly. So if you ever get your brakes changed and it's not, sounding right you might want to take it back to the people that did the breaks but the people that did these breaks are not here they're in a whole different state excuse my hair y'all it has been a day i have a little thing on my hair that i need to tie it up with um so i had took it out but um anyway what i was saying is that sometimes you notice that people don't want to be as responsive they don't want to talk to you um, there was one of the teachers, you know, talking to me, introducing us to one another. Yeah, you should see what this looks like. Look, look at this. <clears throat> it's just to get out of the school. This is just, to, they're directing just to get out of the school. It is a hot mess, y'all. But yeah, so, you know, she made it known that she didn't have anything to say to me. She was talking directly to the other teacher, which is fine. I don't really care, but... I mean, it is what it is. Oh, yeah, I think I left my both of my phones in the back, um, in that bag back there. So I'm not reaching all the way back there for my phone right now. What I was going to say is, yeah, the other teacher, uh, she just didn't really have anything to say to me while the other teacher was introducing us and we were talking and stuff and just having cordial conversation towards the end of the day just now when they release the children. But that's okay because, you know, some people have that 
R-A-C-I-S-T bone in them. And you can kind of see it on their face. You can feel the vibe. Like, and, and I don't have to make this up. Y'all, I have lived around many different nationalities. Living in the military, you grew up around every ethnic race that, that you probably normally would not encounter. So it is what it is. But just knowing that when you come to the United States, it's going to be that no matter where you go. I don't care what state you go to. And then also, I did notice that in this last class, these were fifth graders, which I was unaware of. Um, there was one melanated boy in there that I remember his name. I don't want to say because, you know, for disclosure issues. But he had a really cool name. Um, well, I was Jules. That was his name. I'm not telling you what school it was. But yeah, his name was Jules. And... Um, so I thought he was just playing around, playing around because, you know, he's snickering, he's talking, you know how it goes. But the whole time he was still learning because he asked me to go to the bathroom. So I was like, okay, name two things that you learned from the passage that you read because they did a lot of reading today. And he named two things for me that he learned about the Amazon forest um, or the, yeah, the Amazon and then he had to read another passage about the Boston Tea Party. Y'all know that's some nonsense. So he gave me something that he learned about that because he had to go to the bathroom again. I'm like, what's up with these children having to go back and forth to the bathroom all day? Like he just had gone literally like maybe an hour or two prior. And I don't know what be going on with these children having to go to the bathroom. And then when one goes, then they all want to go and they keep asking. But yeah, so I just feel like at any age, a child is old enough to know when they have to go to the bathroom. And that's not something that I'm going to be like, no, you can't go. But it's like, I don't want the whole class running to the bathroom and they're all out in the hallway. And then the staff is like, well, what is she doing? She's just letting them all go to the bathroom. You know how they be. So I'm like, okay, one at a time. Wait till they come back and then you go. Then, um... <clears throat> Like, if, if y'all need to go to the bathroom, raise your hand. Who needs to go? Because, you know, we can take a bathroom break. It's nothing. You know, we're not in prison. You know how some people want to act like uh, school is prison. We're not in prison. Um, What else? Yeah, so it was him. It was um, a few melanated girls in the fifth grade that I saw. Not many at all. Like, you could count, you could count the melanated children in each classroom. Honestly, everything else was like... Uh, Caucasian or maybe some other ethnic background but those were far and few in between the fourth grade class that I had earlier this a.m. I did see one melanated boy in the class and his name was Miles he's very fair-skinned fair-skinned and he's a little jokester too it seems like I don't know when it comes to our people y'all and it comes to just the way that the children behave a lot of them are a little different so um, you just have to find a way to connect with them and try not to stereotype them, y'all, because we don't know what be going on in the household. But if they're, you know, going to a pretty well school, a pretty good school, then I think that, you know, that speaks a lot about the family and hopefully, you know, like they want, they want the best for their children and they're trying to put them in a better atmosphere because I know at this particular school, um, it's not, it's not considered a Title I school. Title I schools are usually like schools that are kind of struggling on an academic level and have like low resources or, or whatever have you. I'm so sorry about the way this camera is looking because I don't know what settings I have it on right now and I'm driving. So I don't like the fact that it's shading out my face. So if I had my other phone this probably wouldn't be an issue, so my apologies for that, but I just wanted to talk to y'all and let y'all know how today went. Um, this is an episode of Behind the Scenes with Brown Girls, a beautiful CEO and founder, y'all. I'm not wearing BGAB today, because sometimes I like to dress it up and look more professional. Um, a lot of the things that I sell are it's like hoodies, um, t-shirts, tank tops, um, sweatsuits, jogging suits, things like that. And so I don't always want to wear that stuff into the classroom, y'all. And even as a realtor, I don't want to always wear that stuff. You know, they do, um, people judge you based off of how you dress. And even though I can um, dress up BGAB, I can make it look a certain way. Um, certain things I just don't print on because it's not going to 
always come together like I want it to. It's a funny smell out here, y'all. I don't know what that nasty smell is. It smells like, ugh, it just stinks. Ugh. Anyway, so that's how today went, and we're at a red light. So yeah, this has been an episode with yours truly, BGB Brown Girls Are Beautiful. All right, tune in next time. Everybody out there, stay blessed and continue to stay walking in your divinity. Yeah, so I'm here getting the car checked out to see if the tire pressure is okay and if the tire is leaking. Hopefully it's not, so they're going to take it back, put it up on the lift, and take a look at it. I hope it's not leaking, y'all, because I don't want to deal with that. Um, hopefully they can just put some air in all four um. tires and we can worry about getting the tires later. Okay? Tires is gonna be like a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. It's always something, y'all. But um, um I mean, yeah. yeah, it's time for that vehicle to get some tires put on it. Um, so I knew that anyway. But right now, for the sake of just driving it, we just want to make sure the air is in there and that it's not low tire pressure and it's not leaking. So I'm here and waiting latest update.